Okay. Thank you everyone for joining. Hopefully more people is going to join after a couple of minutes. Uh, they might be having some connection issues, but we're gonna wait here for them. So thank you very much uh, to all our panelists. I know that you have busy lives and taking the time to join us mean a lot to us. So here with us today, we have a panel of leaders, game changers and community builders who are going deep to share reflections on their personal experiences, plus helpful tips to practice. Uh, sorry, they, they have practiced and learned along the way. The goal of this talk is to inspire you with their stories and demonstrate the importance of honoring your life and the importance of being your own superhero of your life. So first I'm gonna introduce Itziar Gomez. Thank you Itziar for joining us. We are really happy to have you. She is the CEO of Plasma Communications and she has been named one of LinkedIn Top's voices for the LGBTQ plus community. She has a strong background in government affairs, previously working at ProMexico. Welcome, Itzia, and thank you very much for joining. Thank we you for the invitation. Thank you, Itzia. We are really excited to hear your story. We also have Ana Paula Franco, who is the global lead of commercial and social impact at Justo, the first Mexican 100% digital supermarket. She has represented non-governmental organizations that promote gender equality in front of international organizations. Welcome, Ana Paula. Thanks for the invitation. Next, we have Diana. She is the, the creator manager at LinkedIn, where she builds personal brands and teaches storytelling. Diana is the creator of the podcast Ellas Ahora, through which she has found community and mentors from various fields such as arts, entrepreneurships, and sports. Welcome, Diana. Thank you. And last but not least, we have our dear Danielle Roos, our CMO, CMO at Wiseline, who has spent the past 25 years working in global marketing, investor and analyst relation, and corporate communications. Welcome, Danielle. Thank you, Ma. All right, everyone, now it's time that I pass the mic to Danielle, and we are going to start with some really good questions for our panelists. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maho, for setting all this up with Christy. We really appreciate it. And speakers, Anna, Diana, Itziere, it's so really, it's so nice to have you here. So thank you again for your time. So we'll dive right in. So the topics are about women's superpowers. And, you know, I think as women, we sometimes um, feel that our stories need to be filled with extraordinary feats and a lot of big achievements in order for them to matter or to be interesting. And I think that your story with the struggles, with the mistakes, along with all of the positives are yours. And no one else has lived that life. No one else has those unique qualities. So I think your story is your superpower. And that's what makes you the hero of your life. So with that, I can't wait to dive into this. So for all three of you, <laughs> we're going to open this up for all three, the first question, and then I'll, I'll narrow it down. But I would love to hear why you each think it's important to embrace your personal story. Who starts? I'm I'll sorry, that's my fault. Anna, you can start and then we'll go to Itziar and Diana. Perfect. So first of all, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, mainly because something that you said has happened to me. I've always looked up to women that I think are superheroes and their stories inspire me. So now being here has made me like a, make a deep dive into my own story and realizing why I have to be here and why I have something to say about this. So first of all, I think that acknowledging who you are and how you got here are key factors to self-awareness. Um, 
I've always loved stories. I love meeting new people and their stories because they really help you understand the person. And how can you understand yourself if you don't acknowledge your own story? Everything that you've been through, but not only you, where you come from, your family. I can't understand myself without knowing my grandma's story, my parents' stories, because they actually built everything to have me here at this moment. I, I think that only by knowing yourself is that you are able to know what your superpowers are. Um, this self-consciousness, self-awareness is what really helps you to understand what you have to give to this world. And I do, I'm a true believer that everyone in the world has a purpose, that everyone in the world has some talents. And then when you put together this talents and this purpose, magic happens and that's your superpower. So without knowing yourself, and you have to know your story, acknowledge your story, the good, the bad, the, one, the parts that hurt, the parts that may bring you joy, to understand what you can give to the world, you know? And as you said, you don't have to be like this um, person that would want to do a self-biography you know because your your life is so interesting or that you're full with things that happen to you and that are amazing or that you're going to be in the portrait of or the cover of a, of a magazine your own story matters and you have to be the first one to acknowledge it in order to bring this to the world so that would be my my first answer i love it thank you so much so it's CR. Well, it was a, a such a lovely message, Ana Paula. And uh, you have no idea what a wonderful question this is. Uh, ever since when I was a little girl, I think I knew deep down that I was a lesbian, which naturally made me a critic of gender stereotypes. Even as a little girl, I, I knew I was different. So I took refuge in books, and I used to say books were my friends. Uh, from the time I learned to read, uh, I have tended to identify with stories and their characters. And the books that made a mark on me were part and continue to be part of my everyday life. I loved uh, Tom Sawyer, for example. And when I was a little older, I was drawn to Herman Hesse, Demian, and Holden from The Catcher in the Rye. And all three experienced things I was going through or shared my views. All three had adventures and did exciting things I wanted to do. In the other hand, I didn't identify at all with little women or the diary of a young girl whose main characters live to a certain extent in a state of subjugation. Uh, as I speak this, it dawns on me that most of my favorite books during my childhood and early teens had a male character. Uh, this has changed. These days, I read Healing Through Words by Rupi Kaur and Sandra Cisneros, whose amazing book, Woman Without Shame, puts my thoughts and feelings into words. I can connect with them. I have more resources now and more knowledge than I did when I was a young girl, which makes it easier to find the voices that represent me. Uh, but it is also true that women have learned now to raise their voices, to defend their ideas, to put them down on paper and sign them, because for decades we were ghost writers. It is important we embrace our stories, not just embrace them, but tell them, especially if we are women or belong to my own, by minority groups. Uh, to quote Brené Brown, which is one of my favorite, uh, one of my most favorite authors, and one of the women I admire most when it comes to the subject of vulnerability. Uh, she said, "Our stories are not meant for everyone. Hearing them is a privilege, and we should always ask ourselves this before we share: Who has earned the right to hear my story? If we want, if we have one or two people in our lives who can sit with us and hold space for our shame stories and love us for our strengths and struggles, we are incredibly lucky." If we have a friend or a small, group, a small group of friends or family who embraces us and embrace our imperfections and our vulnerabilities and our power and fill us with a sense of belonging, then we are incredibly lucky too. We are wired with stories. In a culture of perfectionism, 
there's a surprisingly simple reason we want to own, to integrate, and to share our stories, our struggles. We, we do this because we feel the most alive when we are connecting with others and being brave with our stories. It's, it's our own biology. Today, I am really glad, glad and I feel really privileged to be brave and share my story with you. That was a very powerful answer. There's a lot to unpack there. So I'm going to have to come back to you with another question, but I love, love book. My whole childhood was nothing but nose in a book. So we'll have to catch up on our favorite authors later. Thank Great, you for thank that. You. <laughs> and Diana. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Now I go after that. <laughs> no, but actually after Ana Paula and Itier, uh, so I have to be here with you. Um, and actually what I had written down preparing for this uh, panel, it's kind of like what you guys just mentioned. I, if we don't know ourselves, how can we know what we want, right? And we might be at mercy of like the trends or like what the society says, you know? So that's key. Like first to ground ourselves into ourselves, right? Into our stories so that we can know how to use our experience to face different situations, right? So it, it doesn't mean like, oh, then, it, it, what I'm facing right now, uh, I have never faced it. So how can I prepare, right? But when you know, like the dark and the light, right? And, and all the gray in between, then we can own it. We can make these parts conscious, right? And we can start feeling comfortable with it, right? And if we're not comfortable, because that is also something that you touched, Itziar, about how I also grew up feeling like I don't belong where I'm growing up. So um, maybe we should seek for help, right? So for example, this panel is great because here we are telling you like, it's okay if you feel like uh, there's something that's not working uh, either with you or at work or with your family and society in general. So it's important to ask for help and to reach out and and know that you have there's people that can help with that, right? So then once we, we seek help and we start feeling comfortable and we start um, continue, you know, because this is like a marathon. I always say also to the creators that I talk to in different uh, formats that I, am I creating content, same with life, is like, it's a marathon. It's a lifelong journey, right? So we, we have to know ourselves in different situations and so we can use the, the, our experiences, our story, right? And, and that makes us not, to feel sad or or angry or we might have all these like weird uh, feelings, unknown feelings it, when we start to see our story. Um, but ultimately, what it leaves you is with this uh, sense of responsibility, right, of our own lives, and that will liberate us. You know, so I think that's why stories are so important because um, it makes us feel powerful in that sense, right? Uh, and, and you have this feeling of peace in knowing that, okay, this, I could have done this better. This, I did the best that I, that I could, right? So when we value our story, we see things differently and then we can communicate it and express it in different ways. And that is when it starts to resonate and connect with others, right? From this place of authenticity. So that's why uh, I really love the, the topic of this panel. And, and I, there's this quote uh, by Marcel Proust, right? That says the real vo voyage or travel of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes, right? So I think that with it, with ourselves, you can also apply this. Um, so I could talk on and on, but maybe we should go to another question. <laughs> Thank you. Diana, that was fantastic. I am so excited to hear the rest of your stories because all three of you had power and real authentic feeling in there. And I just think this is fantastic. All right, let's get on with the next question because I'm sure we want to hear it. So this one is for Ana Paula. Uh, tell us about a time when you realized that being a woman was a disadvantage and how did you work to overcome that? Sure. So I have to begin this question acknowledging my own privilege. And this is part of my story. Um, I was born in a family. I mean, I'm the youngest of five siblings. 
the oldest ones are three men and then two women. So my privilege was that I was born in a family where there was never a difference between the treatment my brothers and the girls got. Um, I come from family in which my grandma, my, the, my mother's mom studied chemistry. I'm talking about like many years ago and she studied chemistry and then she didn't finish career, her career because she didn't like chemistry. So she studied philosophy. And then my dad's mom worked for her whole life, you know? So my family wasn't traditional in that sense. And for me, it was always about nurturing nur nur my, my mind about learning, about studying, about, yeah, like working on me and not my appearance or not thinking that I was only raised to get married to someone. And it was really, really good, obviously. And I grew up, obviously, like figuring out things, realizing things, having some experiences that are I, I can now realize I shouldn't have gone through this. But I only thought that it was because there weren't bad people around there. I never realized it was a gender thing or that it was a systemic issue, you know? And it was like isolated experiences. So for me, it was just, okay, there's bad people in the world. But I never thought it was because I was a woman. It wasn't until I started college. Um, I studied economics. So it's a mostly male career that I realized my female classmates and I were treated differently. We weren't taken seriously by some of our classmates uh, or even our professors. Um, we weren't expected to have opinions on some things. I remember that, uh, you know, it was like 10 men and me, and they were talking about football. And my dad has taught me a lot about football, you know, soccer. And they were, were, they were talking about a specific game and I said something and they were just like, why are you talking? You're a woman. Why should you know something about soccer? And I was like, really? I bet I know more than some of you guys. Uh, and also it happened obviously in economic things, you know, they just thought that we were there until we got married. Um, I guess it really hit me that we were in some disadvantage. The moment I had to question myself, how is going to be able you have both a family and a career. And it was the moment that I began to look out for female um, examples for me. Female women, well, female women, female leaders that had both a great career and a family because that was something I wanted, you know? Obviously, in the moment I, I began working, you realized that this is a systemic thing, that this is not by chance that you have to prove yourself while probably your male coworkers just have to exist. You have to prove yourself that you're worthy of the position you have, that you're worthy of an opinion, and that you have the authority and the leadership to do or to say, you know. Uh, but I've always been lucky enough to be surrounded by strong women who have helped me through the way. And how have I worked to overcome this? I would say um, three things, and two of them are linked. First, I think that you have to control your inner voice because your inner voice sometimes tells you you can't do this. You're not good enough. You are not um, trained enough for a position. You are, and you know, this, this goes on and on and on. So I've had to and linking it to the first question, through self-awareness, to understand who I am, what I'm capable of, and to be really true to myself, you know? And the second thing is by surrounding me myself with strong women and from people who can support me, and from, from people who, is, who act like this support network, who will tell you the truth, but who will always be your cheerleaders. Um, and overall, I would say that I have come, like, to come in peace with, with my story, with who I am, with the fact that there are so many struggles out there, but I, I am capable of, of fighting these fights and to choosing the fights that I have to fight, you know? 
So for example, for me, gender is a very, very strong topic that I hold close to my heart. So whenever I see something that for me is gender related, I stand up for that and I talk my truth and I'd rather uh, be considered like the crazy one than just keeping shut up, you know? So that would be like my, my, my own advice, um, understanding where you come from, but understanding what that when, where you come from is nothing from where you can be in the future. And then working your ass off to get there, in, regardless of what or who you are. Yes, 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 and yes, and yes. Right. There's a lot I can identify with there. So again, I have to follow up with you after the panel. I had three brothers and a dad, like all men were raised in a household full of men. So, um, and that comes with its own challenges, right? So, now I'm going to ask you sort of the opposite question. So tell us about a time when you realized that being a woman was actually a superpower and how did you experience that? And how did you feel about that? Thank you, Daniel. Well, I generally speaking, I don't think being a woman means we have superpowers. Uh, I think some, sometimes we fell prey to the imposter syndrome or the superwoman syndrome, because we demand too much of ourselves. In fact, gender is a social constru construct influenced by social factors, as we all know, and we experience expectations, cultures, and all that shapes the way we view, we view ourselves and the gender identity. So being woman might be all about traditional femininity for one person, or being a woman might mean to be a lesbian like me, uh, or, or for for other person, being a woman might mean working hard to become the CEO of a company. Uh, what matters most is the is one's own self of self identity. Uh, for both those who assign a female at birth and those who are not, uh, womanhood and gender identity can be something highly personal. And if we accept. Uh, that being a woman has different implications for each of us, and that we each, uh, each of all, uh, uh, that we each have our own story. Then, in my case, being my true self has been like my superpower. Uh, I came out of the closet in 1997. I was 16. I was almost expelled from my high school for holding my girlfriend's hand in the playground, but despite all the bullying I suffered. I refuse to get back in the closet because not accepting ourselves is like dying as low as fixating death. Today, 20 years later, I am married to my wife, Helena. We, are the, well, we were the gay couple number 28 to get married in Mexico. Uh, we have a seven-year-old daughter, Valentina, and I own my own PR agency. So being myself and telling my story has been my way of being free. And it has also been my superpower. Uh, I was so able to get married thanks to, to the generations that went before me. And I am really grateful for them for that. And in the same way, I want future generations to remember us as a community that pushed the envelope on the issue of equality and inclusion in all spheres from the classroom to the workplace. So I think this is the most important superpower I wanted to share with you today. That's incredible. Congratulations on your marriage and your beautiful daughter. I'm Thank sure you. Valentina is as charming as you are. So. She is <laughs> the most charming girl in the world for me. <laughs> I bet. And she's got a comms person as a mom. So I bet she's a great communicator, right? I hope she um, will be. <laughs> These are great. Um, so Diana, I, yes. what advice would you give to, to anyone that, you know, that's listening uh, you know, how do you embrace your life story or how should they embrace theirs and how do, how would you view it as a source of strength or empowerment or how should they? Right. Um, in how to share it with the world, right? Like with like in yes. terms of like I mean, well, and all that. Yeah. And and if there are platforms, I'd love to hear about that too, to, to share that oh. story. Is yeah. 
Okay, so so you want more like first how to embrace our life story and, and view it as a yeah, source. and then okay. how to share it, what platform. And how to share it. Okay, cool. It was so, a two-part. <laughs> yes, okay, great. So um, there's something that I, I've been listening to um, to podcasts that, uh, well, I listen to a lot of podcasts, my preferred medium. And I, I heard this thing that pain is there to teach us a lesson, right? Because why? why are, what are the things that, that don't let you embrace your life story sometimes sometimes because it's painful right so pain is there to teach us a lesson and then one and then there's another thought that says mistakes when they're not learned they get repeated so when I heard that I was like whoa I need to think about this for a second because it's like okay so first is like have this framework this like uh how do you say psychological flexibility right to to see this in from another point of view right and then so this is related to your story when you embrace it again to what we were discussing before then we when we're we, then we can be more honest then we can be more grounded then we can be stronger and then we can connect not in that uh order but all at the same time but what i'm trying to say is that when you uh when you embrace yourself first and I think that this is what we are talking, the three of us, the four of us, that's what we're saying, that, that when you embrace this, then people are going to pay attention and they're, they're going to be willing to go deeper with you, right? And the way to tell your story, then at, since you already noticed your story or you, you took notice, right, then you're going to start t- sharing it. And then when you start sharing it in different formats, then you can perfect how to say your story and depending on your audience right also so um in terms of formats i well there's no right you know there's no one best way or there are many ways right and in this day and age with ai with all these like um the internet right so what i say is pay attention to what you like and and ask yourself why do you like that right and and then try different formats you can writing audio video and see what fits you best right because we're if i tell you yes of course video uh is like trending and that's like the best but if you don't like video then that's gonna stop you from sharing yourself right so first again going back to knowing yourself what do you like why and then trying being open to try right so in my case i realized that I when they interview me or I have to speak in, uh, in, a, in the video format sometimes I get very like oh hi like how I'm talking right now like I, I put like this this um, persona or this like um, so I'm like oh no I feel like nervous and I have to do my hair actually that's why I have braids because I'm very lazy I don't want to do my hair so it's like so in so I feel more edited right so I'm more aware of how I look it sometimes makes me feel uncomfortable but I was like but I love listening to podcasts and I love having conversations with people so in what is it like five years ago in 2019 I was like well I want to express myself I want to be creative and at work I don't I cannot do it first because my job it it doesn't involve being creative and but I was like but I want to do something but I don't know how to do anything I don't know how to paint I don't know how to play an instrument uh, you know so I played basketball for 20 years so that was my you know arena in work so I was like I need to know more people because I need more versions right so I started a podcast and I interviewed over 130 women from diverse backgrounds I was looking for people who were doing things differently um, in, in different uh, areas like art, sports, business, like they were running their own or, or naming their own career. So um, so anyways, so I, I did that and they became my mentors and I, I understood that that's what I wanted. I wanted people who I could ask, like, how do you do this? I don't know how to do it. Can you tell me your story so that I can learn from you and maybe in, in what I learned from them is that I have to find it in myself, right? Um, and first of all, as you can tell, I talk a lot. So that was also a learning that sometimes you gotta let other people, that people say, you talk a lot, you should have a podcast, but actually an interview form- format podcast, you have to do the listening. You're the one asking the question. So I learned that, and, but anyway, so podcast. So that was the way that I use to get into another 
career um because i was doing something else but by doing the podcast i was able to work in podcast related companies i was not even the best at it but it was just through doing it that i learned stuff and now till this day i still use the skills that i learned by doing it but but i had to like do it in order i had to go through that right plus the relationships that i got to make because of it now at linkedin uh because Yes, I know I work there and I love it, but I still think even if I didn't work there, I do think it's an emergent overlooked platform where you can see how people think and, and you can actually connect it through stories, right? Um, so in, in LinkedIn, it's relatively new for people to create and share their stories. And for example, Itziar, I connected with her, not just because she's a top voice at LinkedIn, but because of the stories that she shares. I feel like I know her more because she's sharing herself, right? And also the other day that I shared myself, I shared something personal um, that sometimes people think that, oh, you shouldn't do that at LinkedIn. But the stories, like uh, Itiar said, it's a biological thing. Like we connect through that because that's how we evolved, right? So that our brains, uh, they say that gossip, right? Like, oh, watch the lion over there. Don't go through there. So. So that's, that's how we evolve. So anyways, so back to this. Um, so I strongly advise to, to do this, like, again, knowing yourself, what do you want to do? And then start telling your story and listening to other people's story. And sometimes that is what gives you the courage, right? Because when you hear it's here, you're like, oh man, like she's inspiring me to share my story too, right? So that, that's it. Listening, you know, knowing yourself, listening, asking questions, being curious, and then also sharing yourself. And you're going to, you know, you're going to perfect the way that you share your story and you're going to connect. Now, to, to close this, um, I truly connect with this, with this thing that uh, when we get specific about our story, when, and we can talk about why we do the things we do, then we give it meaning. And, and how do we get meaning by... Um, we, by putting our gifts in service of others, no matter what you do, right? I think Ana Paula was talking about this. So how can I help you? And then when you put your story for the service of other people, how can my story help you? Then it stops being about you. It, stop, it starts being about the other person. And that's when you truly connect. So how can I help you? How can my story help you? Help. So that's why I'm here, right? Because I was honored. To, to share this room with you it, because I believe this is important because stories has have saved me and I believe it can save you. But if we don't put it out there, then we're not going to know. So we have to do it. Anyways, that's it. Thank you. No, Diana, that's really good because I, I think that, so the beauty and the terror of, of uh, technology, right? And I work for a tech company. So I say that because I watched, I have two millennials and a Gen Zer, and I've watched them grow. There was no Facebook in the eighties. I didn't have to worry about someone putting me on camera and then shaming me for the next 20 years of something that I did because when we're young, right? So I, I listened to Diana's story and I think that this generation and the things that I'm hearing here on a pod or on a webinar, here's me, okay, uh, on a webinar that's going to be recorded and played and here you're sharing the most personal pieces of yourself, that's powerful. It's powerful for the women that will hear it because I can assure you, I did not have role models like that. We right. were and also much, you mentioned- yeah. You mentioned okay. technology. I actually, I be, we've all been pondering like, oh, am I, is my job going to exist? What am I going to do, right? If you extrapolate what's going to happen to humans. And the only good thing that I have so far is that it's going to make us more human. And ask uh, Ana Paula and Itia, I mean, when you share like, experiences and you share from that authenticity, that's what people connect to. And, and you know what I mean? And you also don't need all these numbers. You don't need all these millions of views, millions of, you know what I mean? Um, because that is algorithms and all that. You don't need that. Sometimes you just want to connect to the right people. So that I think that is something uh, with technology, now that you were mentioning that, 
technology is going to make us more human. It's going to make us focus in what we should focus, which is like being more authentic and more human. At least that's what I want to believe. <laughs> I, listen, I think that it's there for efficiency. I think this is very exciting what is happening with generative AI. We can go on that on a different webinar. But Let's do another panel. <laughs> I know. Let's do another one. We can do that. Um, we are about five to, to six minutes before we were going to open it up to questions. So what I'd like to do, because I don't want to jump, we do have some questions in there, but right now, let me ask you and we'll start, we'll do kind of a lightning round. So like two minutes each, you give me your, your thoughts on, and I, this question, cause Maho and I, and Christy went back and forth on sort of the questions and this one I hesitate to ask, but I'm going to ask it anyway. And then you get your two minutes and you tell me how you feel. So, you know, everyone always tells us to be authentic. And then when we're authentic, we're labeled as emotional or crazy as Diana put it, or right. We get passionate. And I, you know, I've been in an experience where men were like, well, they were yelling. And then if I raise my voice, it's like, well, you calm down. So I'd like each of you to two to three minutes each, and we'll start with uh, ETR, go to Anna, and then Diana. So go. <laughs> of course, Daniel. Well, are we really more emotional, or is it just that we acquire a different label for the same feeling? Uh, for instance, a man whose emotions run high during a sporting event is described as passionate. But a woman whose emotions are influenced by events or, or something else is considered emotional. Uh, a study conducted recently by the University of Michigan, I, I recently read it, concluded that there is no meaning, meaningful differences between women and men in this regard. So the emotional highs and lows can be attributed both to men and women. We are both in the same emotional roller coaster. So um, I am convinced that we should not be afraid to be authentic. Uh, we should not be afraid to be our true selves. We have all lived in the closet and at some point in our lives. Maybe someone has a disease that is recluded to talk about, or, or something has happened to us that we are ashamed of, perhaps an unexpected pregnancy. But expressing who we are does not make us weak. It makes us human, just as Diana said. And being authentic, it's, uh, well, it takes courage. And, and it's the way we can hear our own voice and the way we can have freedom and emotional security to make our own decisions. Uh, authenticity means you did something for your own reason and not for someone else's reason. And people tend to be afraid of those of those of us who have their own voice or who raise it or, or that use it to transform and change paradigms. It has always been easier to label us as emotional or weak, but it's time to take the labels off. Uh, I would like to close this intervention with a famous quote by, by Oscar Wilde, uh, who advises, be yourself, everyone is already taken. Well, there's not much to say after that. I totally agree with it, Sia. I think that society has a great debt to everyone, regardless of the gender, about emotional intelligence. You know, I think that we have experienced something like this. I think that at least in Mexico, a lot of men live in an emotional closet where they don't feel like they can express their feelings either. And sometimes women think that they have to show no emotion at all to be considered professional or an actual leader. We've talked about, we've talked a lot about superpowers, emotions, empathy, those are our superpowers. And linking it to technology, that's what makes us human. Technology, an algorithm, it will never have feelings by itself. We can. We can have this human part that changes everything, you know? So I would say that we have to first, like, know ourselves, a part of, of everything that we've been talking about, to be trained or educated in emotions and feelings, and then to use them as a superpower, regardless 
of how you feel them because there are also women that don't feel the same like, like women don't feel the same way among us you know there there might be something someone that is a little bit more emotional there might be one that is not emotional at all and it's okay you don't have to cry and you don't have to not cry you don't have to act according to what society is expecting from you you just have to act according to what you know is your true self so let's start let's stop labeling what we should or shouldn't do regardless of your gender, regardless of your history, just be yourself and be okay with it. But I do think that we all need a lot more education and feelings, emotions, and how to act and to use them as our superpower, as humankind, regardless of each one of us. Right, yeah, I agree. And, and also, uh, sorry, I'm jumping in. <laughs> um, but um, I, I would also say I was trying to think about something uh, like a situation where I've been uh, with men, right? Um, with the, the, I'm the only woman in the room. I think someone was asking about that, or or if I have a problem the way some people express themselves and all that. And that is what made me do the podcast, by the way, because I saw that most of the uh, C-suite and the directors and all that, they were all men. So I was like, how can I, I don't see myself like what you were saying, Danielle, right? So I think it is tricky because a, a part of it is like, I listen to an about it and I'm like, yes, but also it, it's very contextual, right? Like sometimes you're in the US and it depends where in the US or it, it depends on like culture, it depends on so many things. And I was angry for a long time. I was like, oh, like, why are they so stupid? Excuse my French. But I was like, seriously, it's 2023 and I still have to see this? Like, Jesus, like they asked me for so much. Like Itier was saying, I have to do all this work to get to this. And these people got here with that mindset and it, it makes you angry. And sometimes, I, and, and what I realized or so far, because it's still a journey, right? That um sometimes it's gonna be generational thing right someone was also talking about generational stuff like sometimes it there's nothing you can do to actually do that so you can only do your best right in your time that you're doing it and and also have this compass of yourself when you're clear about what you want and you know like okay this this is what I think and this is what I'm right and that's why you want this self-knowledge and all this to be grounded and to be like, okay, I think this is right. Then you're going to be brave and, and you're going to say like, well, I think this and I think that, right? I'm, I'm talking about like in a meeting or, you know, and, and you're not going to be afraid to like show yourself because for example, my mom was like, I don't want the spotlight because then people get attacked and then men tell you this and then men tell you that. But if you're clear about your mission, right? And about what you want in the future and in, in about your vision, then you can speak from this place of confidence and, and also uh, confidence also in that maybe might not work out. Maybe it is not the time, but it, it's not going to depend. But what depends on you, you're going to leave in the court. <laughs> like you're going to put it out there. You're going to be like, I did my work. I'm doing it all the best that I can. And you're going to be satisfied with that. And the rest, because sometimes it's politics, it's culture, like working in corporations and startups and all that. But and it also, it might depend on maybe you deciding that, you know, I cannot work like this. So I need this, this, and this. What can I do that it's on my power? Okay, maybe I can talk to HR, maybe I can talk to this, I can talk to peers, I can talk to, you know, and then then you assess the situation and then you take, you know, maybe right now I'm, I'm getting too broad, but to the point, but my the main point is that also recognizing that sometimes is the culture of places, right? And you can seek for allies, seek for people that you can be like, oh, okay, like I had a rough day, but I have my ally here, right? So seek for allies, seek for help, know yourself, um, and and find your tribe, right? And maybe that's gonna be something good because you're gonna connect with people because they have those same challenges, right? So you never know. I love the serendipity of life in that sense. So <gasps> serendipity. Thank you for that, all of you. And I'm going to jump 
we do have three questions here. Um, and I, Ana Paula, I think you might be typing an answer. So if you don't mind, so everyone else can, can hear, there's a, someone who asked that they were having trouble breaking through generational walls with their parents because their parents wanted them to just marry rich man, stop <laughs> working, have economic safety. And this person saying, how can you give me some recommendations? How do I get through this? I feel they don't see me as strong enough. Okay, so re you can remember that I talked about my family background and everything. Um, of course, my parents, even if they were like equal in the treatment they give to their siblings, they were worried about some specifics for my sister and myself. And they obviously wanted me to have safety in life, okay? So my first recommendation here would be like, and it, this is totally personal, don't be too tough on them. Understand what's behind their worries. It's not that they want you to, ma to marry a rich guy, I think, okay? I don't know your parents, obviously. I think they want what's best for you. And this is one of the things that they consider to be the best for you, okay? Um, my dad, for example, was raised in a very traditional uh, way. And sometimes it's hard for him to question himself what he has known all his life. And you can, of course, like guide them or to go along with everything that you want them to see, but don't expect them to change overnight. In my dad's case, he's been thinking like this for 69 years. So for me, it's amazing that he's still trying to unlearn things to then learn them again. Okay, so first, I, I like to think that they are doing it for something that they consider that's best for you. And then become the man that they want you to marry. Like if they want you to have safe, like economic safety, work, and then be able to like start to, to provide for yourself. If they want you to have, like understand what behind these, these, these uh, worries and then become that. Obviously, if that's what you want, okay? If you want to become an artist and to live life in a different way, that's okay. But you have to be true to yourself, true to them. And if they see that you are a capable person of having his, their own decisions, your own decisions, and to act accordingly, I think that sooner or later, they will be cool with it. And even if they are not, then say true to yourself. Like, I have a very close relationship to my parents and I really like having them in my life, but you can just like put away your priorities for others, even for your parents. So I would go like, I know I went from white to totally black, but I think that's the way I would approach this problem. Thank you. I just had seen you typing, but I'd like to know, ETR, uh, Diana, anyone have anything to comment to that before I move on to the next question? Life is short, Ana Paula <laughs> said it. So it's like if you're trying to please everyone or talk to everyone, that applies also to content. If you talk to every, then you talk to no one. And yeah, life is short. And then sometimes it's good. something might happen where like uh, hopefully not something too bad like a tragedy or like something that it's going to make you realize that so so uh, maybe it might be better to to just uh say what Ana Paula said like let, let's you know it's your life and it's your and it's short and so make the most of it and I'm so sorry I have to jump to another uh training but this is this has been great and I hope we do it again and thank you so much for for everything so. Thank you for joining, Diana. We really appreciate Bye. it. Hope to see you again. So uh, with Anna and CR, um, so there was, there are a lot of people that are curious about your book recommendations, ETR. So I feel like um, we just need to follow up with you and share a list of books because I'm interested too. <laughs> but do you want to give your top three? Yes, of course. I love, uh, I love, uh, as I stated in my first uh, intervention, I love Brenda Brown. I think she is amazing. Any of her books are great. And uh, also I love uh, an American poet 
but she has also a, a Hispanic heritage. Her name is Sandra Cisneros. She is great. And, and her book, Woman Without Shame, is amazing also. And, uh, and I also um, quoted uh, uh, Rupi Kaur. She's an American poet. She's a feminist. And I love her poems because they, they really represent what women's uh, what women feel in some times of our lives. So I highly recommend that uh, three books. And uh, in the podcast, uh, I think um, Diana was more experienced than me, but I I uh, listen frequently Harvard Business Review, Women at the Workplace uh, podcast. I love that podcast and I highly recommend it because it, it has a uh, very... Uh, practical suggestions to apply in our everyday life. So, so that's something I, I will I will highly recommend to to whoever is uh, is with us here in the in the session. Thank you. I do listen to HBR. I like that podcast a lot. Okay, we are going to close out in about four minutes. So on this last one, uh, I get asked this all the time by my direct reports, but I want to put it out to you both. There's a meeting full of men. You walk in the room. You're the only woman. That's happened, I'm sure, to a lot of us. It's definitely happened to me. Do you think you should step up your seriousness and take on a poker face attitude or just be yourself? Because this person said they have a joyful personality and sometimes they're afraid of not being taken seriously. So both of you feel free. If you want to go first, it's here. Oh, as you wish, Anna Paula. Well, okay. maybe maybe I, I, I can share with you some thoughts and and then you, you can finish uh, as we uh, as and then we can have a high, a very high uh, closure of the session. Uh I am a diversity, equity, and inclusion consultant also. And when I give my advice to some of the women that that work in the in different companies, I usually tell them to to be there themselves and to act as they usually do with authenticity, but also speaking for her uh, for or speaking at at loud and. Um, and having strong ideas and and also fighting for for their ideas to be done for because that's something that usually happens and there 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 are two common mistakes in the in this kind of sessions man interrupting that's when when um, uh, we are talking and uh, a man interrupts a woman that happens really frequently in fact harvard has a study where they uh, record different sessions at work and they found that 80 percent of the sessions were had a man voice um, and the the, the other 20 percent had a woman voice so we have uh less representation of our voice in the sessions in a literal manner and the, also uh we of speaking by ourselves there's this also this second uh topic that we should address that it's uh, the mansplaining when a man thinks that uh, has to explain to women all all their thoughts because that's the way they feel like they, they have their they they know more than us and they have the knowledge and that they have they they know everything and that then they are the the respectful boys that ha has to explain everything those are two common mistakes and the the the, um, the advice I would like to give to this uh, anonymous assistant of this session is to also try sitting at the head of the table, because uh, sometimes we think, oh, only the CEO or the CFO can sit at the head of the table. We we are we should sit at the at the also at the head of the table because uh, that's a place. That's also a social construct, and as social constructs, we 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 should also question if it's okay and if it and if we should consider uh, to to continue that kind of practices. Okay, so that I totally agree with everything that Itziar says, but and I would also like to add something: um, being yourself 
isn't different necessarily from being professional. You can be yourself and be professional. Um, knowing yourself comes with a responsibility, at least for me, and it's becoming the best version of myself. Okay, so you of course can be like playful, you can be joyful, you can be and still be professional. You just have to learn how to communicate in, in the best way according to your own personality. You, you don't have to be anyone else or someone else. You can be yourself, just be the best version of yourself. So my recommendation here, and that's what I have I have done because um, talking about my previous uh, work experience, I used to be with a lot of men, consultants, which can be hard sometimes. And I was like 24 years old and I was their boss. And they were like, seriously, what do you have to tell me about anything in the world? And I'm like this, and I'm like this in a normal meeting, a job. So there's obviously always this trap of becoming someone else and trying to be like more serious or no, be yourself, just prepare yourself so that that can still be professional and that you can learn uh, to understand the different environments you're at and that you can be yourself in that environment so that you can be empathetic and to adapt yourself to the, the, to the circumstances you're living, but never rejecting who you are. Well. Wow. You two have said it better than I ever could. So I think we will close out there. And thank you so much. This has been so great. Ana Paula, ETR, thank you very much. And with that, we'll close this out. And hopefully it sounds like we might want to get together again because I think it was great. Good chemistry. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank Danielle. you. Bye. Bye.